I'm Tommy Thomas. I want to welcome you back to the show, How to Beat the Odds. If you've watched the show before, you know that I begin every show talking about that old devil and the demons. You say, well, why does he always do that? Because they kept me from God's will, plan, and purpose for my life for 32 years as I cheated people out of millions of dollars with a deck of playing cards. I thought I had to have that lifestyle and all the money that comes with it so I could buy all the things to try to fill that empty place in my heart. But only God can fill that empty place. And when 10 years ago I found out that God had called me when I was a teenager and I'd missed that call, I also found out something else. The giftings and callings of God are without repentance. They're always there. We can pick up the call because God's a God of grace and mercy and He forgives us and, and we can step into God's plan for our life. But one of the things that to keep that from happening, it was an old demons it talks about in the Bible, the fiery darts go in. You're not worthy. You did all that stuff. Who you think you are? What makes you think God wants to use you? Condemnation. The Bible says there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus because we've all missed it. We've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So God is a God of forgiveness. God is a God of love. He knows we're human beings. He knows we make mistakes. But as long as we get back up on our feet and say, God, I want to do it your way. Forgive me. God will say, come on, son. Let's go get him. I'm excited about my guest today, Ernie Vandergriff. I met Ernie. We went over to Israel together on an Israel trip with my church and Ernie's church, Calvary Cathedral International, with our pastor, Bob Nichols. Every year they have a trip to Israel. And we went on that trip together. And God brings people together and bonds people together when they go on a trip like that because you're sharing the places that Jesus walked and, and ministered and taught and where the miracles happened. And you can't go someplace like that with a friend and get to know people and experience that together without God forming a relationship because that relationship is truly built around Jesus Christ. Well, right now I want to introduce my guest, Ernie Vandergriff. He's going to talk about some of the things that happened to us in Israel and, and his life and how his family came into the kingdom of God when he got his heart right and about his ministry today. So I want us to learn about his ministry because he's going to be taking his ministry out and speaking into people's lives. So let's find out more about it right now as we meet Ernie. Ernie, welcome to How to Beat the Odds. Well, thank you, Brother Tommy. Man, uh, like I said, we met over in Israel. We had an awesome time. We felt like God was speaking to both of us that we were going to have a relationship. Yes, amen. Amen. Awesome time, wasn't it? Oh, it was a great time. I just, uh, it was a life-changing time. The feelings that we had in the upper room and, and uh, the different things that happened, it just kept getting better. It did, didn't it? It's hard to explain. It's hard to explain Israel to anyone that's never been to Israel because it's like going back home. Yeah. And it's like the Word of God becoming real instead of just being on, on a page. Well, you start out around the Sea of Galilee down mm -hmm. at the lowest point, and you work your way up, and you're working your way up to Jerusalem, which is our eternal home. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, uh, it was a, a trip that was a life-changing trip. And uh, actually, my ministry, I would say, began as soon as I got back from Israel. God started speaking to you about your ministry, didn't yes, He? Yes, yes, He sure did. And, and answering questions that, that I had asked before, you know, you, you in the opening statement, you uh, talked about uh, uh, God using you and, and, uh, or being able to use a person. For myself, I looked at how could God use me? I mean, could He even use me? And um, I've always had some pretty strong doubts about that. But to go over to some place like Israel and, and to actually see where Elijah stood uh, in, front of, in front of the prophets of Baal. Yeah. And not just that he was victorious over them, 
but it was pretty cocky with what he actually did because he knew who was on his side. And I think that that's where my ministry really goes to, is that um, I understand that if, if it was just in my power, I really don't have much to bring to the table. But I'm a willing vessel, and I love the Lord with all my heart. And he's, he, he's learned how to work through me. I guess it even took God a little while to get it through my head how I could let him work through me instead of trying to make God work. Well, once you did that, though, then you saw God start working in your family because you yielded yourself yes. to him and he began to flow through you. And then when you ministered to your brother and others in your family, that anointing went forth. Absolutely. God opens doors for me now that I never knew existed. I, I really thought I was a very good businessman. Um, you weren't a Christian or really living for the Lord at this time. Not a Christian at all. Uh, if you'd have asked me if I was a Christian, I would, have, I would have probably told you that I was, but I did not know Christ. And um, things just, but, but, but the Lord knew me. Yeah. And he I, studies I, the whole thing. And, and, and I, I, know, <laughs> I know that now, that He had a plan for where uh, our business would go to. And, uh, but in one year, we bought four businesses. And uh, one of them being one of the largest labs in, in, in the South, ultrasonic research. And out of those labs for years, uh, what we would do, we would sell the equipment to make our living. Uh, we sold off most of the equipment uh, that was, you know, uh, highly desired equipment across the, across the nation. And what was left, we ended up taking and, and uh, setting up our own lab. Which you hadn't really planned on doing. Hadn't planned on doing it at all. It just got to where I had pieces of equipment that were, were very large, hard to sell. And so other people would say that, that type of business doesn't exist in the Dallas-Fort Worth area anymore. Again, this was the end of the Cold War now, and, right. and we were going through a defense uh, right. downsizing. And so, you know, after, uh, after having that told to me so many times, I said, well, you know what, I'm just going to set it up. I believe that that world does exist. And it was a year, about a year after I had set the lab up, and I set it up purely, people would say, do you have any contracts? And I'd say, no, I don't have contracts, but I know if I put this together, the contracts will come. Well, it was probably about a year after we had set the lab up uh, that I found the Lord. And after I found the Lord, I literally turned my company over to, to Jesus. And I said, you know, whatever you want me to do with this, uh, this is going to be for your glory. And... Of course, I was a baby Christian, and I was just growing in the things of God. So, uh, you know, I, I was making all kinds of mistakes in, in, in what I was doing. I had my, I had my uh, employees so panicked that they said, you know, uh, look, you know, he's really lost it. He was a good businessman. We were doing a good business. Now, we really probably better find another job because this thing is going to go down the tubes. And it did. The business got so slow that the phone literally stopped ringing for months. And my guys would say, look, Ernie, we'll go home. Uh, when a job comes in, why don't you just give us a call and we'll come do the job. And I said, well, you know, don't worry about it. God's going to take care of me. And, and of course, these people weren't saved and they didn't understand this. And uh, it wasn't until after I got the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And after receiving the baptism in the Holy Ghost, uh, our business really started to take off. Wow. We're going to go some praise and worship. When we come back, we're going to talk to Ernie about how the baptism of the Holy Ghost made a difference in his business and how he began to apply godly principles to his business. He had an inspection he had to go through that's a very difficult thing, but God spoke a word to him, and now he's encouraging and helping other people go through the same thing. And he's got godly principles that he's sharing with people that work in any business. So when we come back, we're going to talk to him some more about that. Let's go to the praise and worship. I'm up once again in the middle of the night. It has happened time after time. There's a melody dancing around in my head. A tune I can't erase from my mind. As I'm writing down the words, it occurs to me. This gift you have given me. How I sometimes take it for granted Expectations get the best of me If I never get to sing in front of millions of people If I never get to be on a stage If 
I never hear my voice on the radio or see me on a magazine page, it would still be worth all those sleepless nights when you gave these songs to me. I will always have them in my heart and this gift you have given me I'll give it back to you and I love to sing my songs for you Lord cause I know how much you love to hear them. and when I begin to sing these words I feel you start to sing them through me I am satisfied that you are pleased that's all that really matters I can wait until the day when I see you face to face and sing these songs around your throne and if no one else ever listen to me if my songs were never heard it's enough to know that you are singing along cause you memorized every word so if I never get to sing in front of millions of people if I never get to be on a stage if I never hear my voice on the radio or see me on a magazine page it would still be worth all those sleepless nights when you gave these songs to me I will always have them in my heart and this gift you have given me I'll give it back to you this gift you have given me I'll give it back to you welcome back I'm talking to my guest Ernie Vandergriff we've been talking about how he's been very successful at business and God's given him a ministry to reach out to other businessmen and tell them about godly principles and what really works in business well, God put it in your heart as a young man to be an entrepreneur. Yes, He did. And yes, he did. that was always kind of in there, wasn't it? Well, you know, Tommy, from a very early age, I had a belief that I would be, uh, I, I thought I'd be a millionaire before I was 30 years old. And I've owned several businesses. My first business, I was 17 years old when I started my 17? business. 17? 17 years old. What was that business? I had a carpet cleaning business here right. in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And, yeah. and uh, you know, it was, uh, it was tough. I worked really hard. I've never been afraid of hard work, but I found that, that through my life, until I found Jesus Christ, that that's what it was. It was, it was just hard work. I, I, it was me doing a job rather than after I found Jesus and I, I got the baptism in the Holy Spirit, I understood that, that I really don't have to be good. I don't have to be talented. Uh, I just have to be willing. And when I turned my business over and my life over to the Lord, He was able to start working through me. And as He started working through me, that's when I came to the, to the knowledge that um, uh, it's not the business that God wants me to do. He wants me to give to my brother. That's the first word God ever gave to me. I want you to give to your brother what I've given to you. And that's the knowledge of who God is and how God will work through you. If you're so good, Tommy, that, that you can do it on your own, you probably really don't need God. And you're missing or you don't God's think, whole plan. Or you plan. don't think you need God. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and, and, and your hands are going to be on, on the work so much that, that it's probably not going to be uh, successful in His way. Well, the now, guys working for you, they looked at you and thought you were crazy. Yes. Because you were doing it God's way. Yes, they did. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and praise God, several of those... Uh, individuals we've led to the Lord. That's actually become our our ministry right there. We we uh, we preach to everybody that comes through the doors. Uh, but people have started to understand that that's what my ministry is now, to give to other businessmen uh, what God has given to me, the knowledge that that 
God is at work. He's not just, uh, you know, we think of God working, healing someone or, or their prosperity. But God needs to actually be at work. There's no difference in your, in your business life and your personal life. It's all one. And those same uh, foundational truths that work for you as a Christian will work for you as a businessman. Now, that's the, hard, that's the thing that we really leave out, that we can actually speak things into existence. We can, we can call those things as, as if they are. He will honor our petitions. We, we've, we stand together in, in, uh, in corporate prayer now every morning, and we speak those things uh, into existence for not only for the individuals, but for our business. And we've been so effective at it. God has honored it, our, 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 uh, our passion so much and, and our drive, how we've, how we've pressed in, that the employees have, have actually, they see our prayers manifest themselves. And it encourages and, 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 them. Well, it, it shocks them. Yeah. They, they stand back and they go, wow, we prayed for this. Look at this. It works. It works. <laughs> it really works. And so not only do they see it happening in business, but they take those same foundational truths home and they start applying them in their families. Amen. But what has been really amazing for us is that other businesses have seen what we do now. Well, now you had an inspection or something. I remember you telling me that yes. it's pretty complex. Well, it's, it's called a NADCAP inspection. Okay. Where you'll have an auditor that will come in and spend about a week with you. Uh, last year we did our NADCAP inspection and for uh, actually one method and a quality program we ended up with 18 write-ups, and it took us eight months to clear those write-ups. Now you pay, you pay very dearly for the privilege of having these audits. This year, when it came time for the audit, we started preparing, and I could see, I could actually see in all of my employees that they really started panicking at the thought that, you know, the audit's gonna be next Monday. And so I, I called everybody together and I said, look, I said, this panic stuff, it stops right now. I said, we're going to pray about this. We speak things into existence every day. This is no different. We're going to speak this into existence. So we all joined hands and um, I spoke forth a godly man would be sent to do our audit and that we would be shown favor with man as well as with God. And it was really, it was, it was so exciting on the day that, that uh, our auditor walked in that he was in the, he was in the uh, conference room speaking with my uh, quality manager, Ruben, and I walked in, and out of his mouth come his Sunday school class. And I said, First oh, night. <laughs> Sunday school? <laughs> Sunday school? <laughs> and we started talking about the Lord, and an hour later, I said, look, we're going to have to, I'm going to leave, let you guys get back to business, because if I stay here, all we're going to do is talk about God. This went on for a week, and at the end, we had the greatest, it, it was the greatest experience that we had ever gone through as far as an audit. So when we finished this, we had other companies in the area, and I'm talking about large bonding companies and things of this na nature, forging companies that called us and they said, How'd it go? Because they were actually having more problems with it than we had had. And you got to share. We shared what had happened, told them they could not believe it. They ended up, they said, will you pray with us? I said, absolutely. They came over, we prayed. We spoke things into existence for their companies. They went back and they had corporate prayer with their employees. And the following week they had their inspection. They picked up the phone and I, I got a phone call the following Wednesday. And he said, Ernie, I just want to thank you for what you've done. He said, we had the best audit. And uh, I said, well, you know, I said, you don't have to thank me. We need to thank God Almighty. It, it, was, it was Him, His Spirit, that, that provided this victory for us. And he said, yes, we need to tell other people about it. And at that time, that's when God told me, this is, this is what I was talking to you about, telling your brother, give to your brother what I've given to you. Praise God. Out of this, a ministry is being formed. He was obedient. He prayed with his employees. 
They believed God. He did not let a spirit of fear come in and take over. He said, no, we're not going there. Our God's a big God. Amen. And they believed God. They prayed for favor with God. And here comes a man, and the first thing out of his mouth is about Sunday school. God has people waiting in position for all of us when we do it his way. Yes. And I don't know what you're going through, what kind of business you're dealing with or, or what kind of job you have or how impossible it may seem. But when you stop trying to make it happen and you say, God, I just want to do it your way, God will make a way. And now your business, you're excited because I know you had a meeting over at one of your buildings one night and we came over and you were talking about the vision that God's given you. Yes. There are people watching this show right now that have businesses. Maybe you are a Fortune 500 company. Maybe you're a successful business. But I'm telling you right now, if you have un ungodly people running your business in an ungodly manner, it will be judged. So whether you're wanting to build your company, whether you're wanting to uh, maintain your company, it should be for the kingdom of God and, and His righteousness. And if that's what you're doing, God's going to judge it. It's going to be for the harvest. And, you know, I, I think people get so worried about when they start, when you start mixing God and business in, well, that means I have to give up all my money. That means I have to give up all my toys. I'm going to tell you, I could never provide for myself what God has provided for me. His visions for me are so much bigger than my visions for me. And, but, but you have an opportunity and you need to step into that opportunity and seize that opportunity. If you'll seize that opportunity and if you'll stand out there and you let it be God's business, then you cannot, you cannot fail. It's fun to do it God's way. Oh, it's way. fun. It's, it's fun. fun. It's fun the to do it The pressure's all gone. There is no pressure. No. There's no pressure. It's not about money. No. It's about souls. Yes. Because ultimately we're spreading the good news. And the good news, of course, is Jesus Christ. And so uh, there is a big harvest. There is a big harvest. And it's up to corporate America. It's up to a righteous nation. There were 30 million, 30 million evangelical Christians that sat silent four years ago that decided that we would have a godly man in office right now. Amen. And for that reason, we have a voice. We have a voice in government. We have a voice in business. And if you'll stand out and speak what God has given you to speak and do your business as God has given you. Uh, I mean, we've got a foundation right here. You don't have to make anything up. Everything that works when you're praying for a healing, everything that works when you're praying for your personal uh, prosperity, it's right here. It'll work in your business. And, and not only do you need this for you, but you need to share this with every brother and sister that you have. We would just like very much that if there's anybody out there that's, that's struggling, because we know these things, that's even just like, you know, when you're talking about going on a diet, you know, we know if you start eating less food and, and, and uh, start exercising, you'll lose some weight. But somehow, it's just not as easy to do it on your own as when you know somebody that has, has proven God's word to be true, that, that he, has, he has shown himself true to them, then you can believe it. And there's, again, there's nothing special about me other than that Jesus Christ uh, works through me in this way. And I know that God has given to me a message for you as businessmen. And I'm even going to tell you, if, it, if you're in a business place and you're not getting the promotions that you should be getting, if you're not getting the raises you should be getting, God said that you should have favor among men. There's a way. And it's right here. So we would love for, for anybody that, that, uh, that is struggling with these things or would just like to do it God's way. We'd love to talk with them. We'd love to show them that way. And, you know, well, it's, ultimately we're all working for God. Yes, we are. We work for the same man. Work for the same man. It's, and and it, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, would you pray for people that they'll I get a hold of this and, and their business that they'll recognize that it's God that everybody's working yes. for and start applying godly principles to Amen. their businesses? Pray Amen. for them. Just look at your camera and pray oh, for people. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, Father God, we come before you right now as our provider, uh, Jehovah Jireh. You are, you are, you're not the God of enough. 
You're God of, of more than enough. And we thank you so much for what you're doing in our lives, Father. Lord, I know that there's people out there right now that are watching this program, that are, that are struggling in the business world, and maybe they're, even, maybe they're even successful as far as their bank account goes, but they know that their business is being run in an ungodly way. Father, I just ask right now that you would send your spirit forth and that you would touch them, Lord, and that, that they would know that you are God, and that, that oh, Father, just, just pour out your Spirit upon them to where they will be infectious to this world, that everybody they do business with, everybody they come in contact with will be infected by your Spirit, and that they will leave changed. And so, Lord, I give you praise, honor, and glory. I ask for all, for everybody that's watching this program right now, I ask for the wisdom of God for the knowledge of God to fall down upon them, for a fresh anointing to fall down upon them. And when they go back into their workplace, that they go back in there changed. And they start flying the banner of Jehovah Nisi. And, and there's no one that will ever enter into those workplaces not knowing that this is God's people. We thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord, with all of our hearts. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Ernie, thanks for being on the show Thank again. You, I'm excited about your I ministry. I am too. Glory Hallelujah. to God. Hallelujah. Listen, I know some of these things touch some of your hearts that Ernie was talking about. I know some of you are struggling with businesses right now. I know some of you are saying, well, a lot of these people aren't really godly people working for me. I can't just fire them. What am I going to do? I wouldn't have anybody to work for me. First, in love, share the gospel with Amen. them. Amen. Speak God's love to them and say, we're going to make this business a Christian business. We're going to do it with godly principles. Yes. And when God brings people together, there's power. There's strength when Christians come together under the anointing and join in prayer and believe God for what they need. Yes. It's so important to do that. Get with other Christians. Talk to people that work for you. Say, hey, let's do it God's way. And if it doesn't work out with someone and they're living for the devil, Pray for them, but then ask God to send you someone that's doing it His way. Amen. God will do that. Yes, He will. Well, let Ernie hear from you. Let us hear from you. You can email me at Tommy at HowToBeatTheOdds.com, and I'll have Ernie's email address up so you can contact him. Thanks for watching the show. We'll see you next time on How To Beat The Odds. I'm up once again in the middle of the night. It has happened time after time. There's a melody dancing around in my head A tune I can't erase from my mind As I'm writing down the words it occurs to me This gift you have given me How I sometimes take it for granted Expectations get the best of me if I never get to sing in front of millions of people If I never get to be on a stage If I never hear my voice on the radio